Income growth is preceded by inner growth. In other words, your business is like a personal development course with a compensation plan attached. The more you grow, the more your income grows. What's up, everybody? Dord Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about the counterintuitive nature of success. Have you ever wondered why success oftentimes can seem like such an uphill battle, such an endless grind? Reminds me of a great quote I heard from Brian Tracy, a best-selling author and world-class business consultant and entrepreneur. He said, regardless of how high you climb on the ladder of success, we're either in a crisis, heading out of a crisis, or heading towards another crisis. And I thought, wow, that is so true. It's not the toxic positivity you hear nowadays where it's like lollipops and unicorns and happy and clappy and you know, just focus on success and f- focus on all the good stuff in your life and everything's going to be wonderful. No, life presents challenges. Life can kick you in the proverbial nuts or ovaries. Life can be hard. There's storms, there's turbulence, there's challenges, there's death, there's sickness, there's all kinds of crises we go through in life. That's just reality. In other words, challenges are not the exception. Challenges are the norm. What if we stopped resisting this fact and we started to embrace it like the eagle that soars higher in the midst of the storm? What's possible when we embrace the challenges versus resisting and thinking that the challenges shouldn't be there? The challenges are there. So what would it take for us to use them to propel us higher? And that really is the essence of the counterintuitive nature of success. As leadership expert John Maxwell once said, we don't do the hard things for the sake of getting them over with and moving on to the easier things. We do the hard things so that we can handle the even harder things, so we can expand our capacity, just like going to the gym and building muscle. You don't build muscle so you can focus on the lighter weights. You build muscle so you can have capacity to handle the heavier weights, right? So it's really about expanding our capacity. And how do we expand our capacity in the gym for using this metaphor? By sitting on the sidelines and watching other people work out? Of course not. By calling our comfort zone and just working on those five pounders all day, every day? Of course not. We got to expand our capacity by pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone by going to the point of, quote unquote, failure. That's the essence of the counterintuitive nature of success. Because it's counterintuitive, right? Going for the pain to get the gain, that's counterintuitive. Doing what's hard so you can handle harder, that's intuitive. Getting comfortable being uncomfortable, that's not intuitive. It's counterintuitive. You see, everyone wants to be rich, fit, and happy. Everybody wants to be fit, rich, and happy. But most people are fat, broken, unhappy. Why is that? Because success requires us to swim upstream against the current of average, the current of our comfort zone, against the current of convenience. Have you noticed? Are you with me on this, friends? I trust you are. So with that in mind, here are three counterintuitive truths of success, what it really takes to be a successful mortgage pro a successful person in life in general, but certainly as a mortgage professional, and to be able to have sustained success long-term, not just winning in a fair weather market when rates are low, but winning in any market, regardless of rates and or inventory and market conditions. So are you ready for this? Buckle up, cease in the upright position. It's go time, y'all. Let's dive in. The first counterintuitive truth is that income growth is preceded by inner growth. Income growth is preceded by inner growth. In other words, your business is like a personal development course with a compensation plan attached. The more you grow, the more your income grows. As the late and great Jim Rohn once said, you can have more because you can become more. Don't wish life were easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skill. 
Don't wish for less challenges. Wish for more wisdom. Man, that's powerful, isn't it? It's so potent and so true. He also said, the greatest reward in becoming a millionaire and having the ambition of becoming a millionaire is not the amount of money you earn. It's the kind of person you become. To become a millionaire requires you to become a bigger person if it's centered in a benevolent place to serve others, to help others, to expand your capacity, to grow as a human being, to grow in your ability to problem solve, to overcome challenges, to not just do the hard things so that you can move on to the easier things, but to handle more of the harder things. We do hard so we can handle harder, so you can expand your capacity. Success, and coming back to the quote from Jim Rohn, success is not something you pursue. What you pursue will forever elude you, like trying to chase butterflies. Success is something you attract by the person you become, by becoming a more attractive person, which is really about your character, your virtue, your virtue, that inner strength, that inner soul strength, your ability to bring more value to others. Growth doesn't happen by accident, does it? Any more than you see a beautiful garden and think that happened by accident. No, beautiful garden takes a lot of pruning and tilling and fertilizing and weeding and watering. It takes a lot of TLC, right? Tender, loving care. It doesn't happen by accident. It happens by design. So my question to you is, what's your daily growth plan? Do you have a daily growth plan? Or are you just leaving it to happenstance? If you're leaving it to happenstance, it's like expecting an abundant harvest in your garden and not having a plan for nurturing and caring for your garden. How well do you think that's going to go? Not very well. We have to be intentional. And again, a big part of this is the counterintuitive nature that we need to be part of creating this process. We need to be part of creating it versus just letting it happen. And a big part of that process, again, is understanding that in counterintuitive nature of success that nothing grows without in terms of your income, your bank account, your closings, your volume, until you first start growing within. There is no momentum without that isn't first preceded by momentum within. As you grow, your income grows. Okay, so that's the first one. The second counterintuitive truth of success is this. The secret to success is in the process, not the prize. It's in the process. My son, he's 14 and he's been in house soccer this year. It's been great to see him develop as a player, as a team player, as an athlete. He's got a natural ability. Man, that kid can run like the wind. He runs like an antelope. So it's really cool to see him using that unfair advantage on the soccer field. And yet he's in house league. He really has the ability to be a rep player, but our family has a high value of quality time as a family and not being crazy busy and having some margin to relax together and enjoy life together as a family. And as you can imagine, when you have kids in competitive sports at a rep level, you know, they're practicing three times a week, they're doing games two times a week, and you end up just taxi driving and you have no life outside of sports. We intentionally as parents decided, you know what, as much as we'd love to support our kids in high level athletics, we're not delusional to think that they're going to be professional athletes uh, and think that that's, you know, something worthy of pursuit to sacrifice all these other things that are a much higher value for us as a family. So Ezra is in house league, even though he really has the capability and the talent and the athleticism to be a rep player, which means that the people on his team, the kids on his team, generally speaking, with relatively rare exception, are not rep players. You know, they're lower level players. And what's great is Ezra is a team player. So he passes to them regardless. He works as a team regardless. He doesn't hoard the ball. It's beautiful to see. And what I remind him before he has his games is that you can't control the score, son. You can't control the play and performance of your teammates. You can only control your own effort. You can only control what you bring to the table. 
how you hustle, how you focus on those little mini battles to the ball, your level of effort. Others might have more talent than you, but don't let them out hustle you. Others might have longer legs or more skill or more ball handling ability than you, but don't let them out hustle you. We do our best. We trust God with the rest. So the new definition of success I'm trying to drill home for my son is if you do your best and you know that you did your best, regardless of the score on the scoreboard at the end of the day, if you did your best and you know you did your best and you learned something and you grew and you made progress, then you won. If you know you didn't give your best, even if you guys won, even if your team won, if you know in your heart, evaluating honestly how you hustled and what you brought on the field and whether or not you left it all on the field or you held back and you didn't give it your best. If you didn't give it your best with an honest evaluation of your own effort and you didn't learn something, then you lost, even though the scoreboard says you won. So notice how there's a counterintuitive nature of success baked into that equation. It's not intuitive. The process is more important than the prize. When you focus on the prize, the desired result you don't yet have, whether that be closings or volume or income, and you think about the outcome you want, yet you don't have it, how does that make you feel? It generally, if you're like most people, makes you feel that contrast in the results you want and the results you have as lack, limitation, and scarcity, right? It's a feeling of lack. It's the gap between where we are and where we want to be that causes that frustration, that annoyance, that fear, that anxiety, that worry. And we feel inadequate and we feel lack, right? So when we focus on the prize, everyone says, keep your eyes on the prize, keep your eyes on the prize. I think that's BS. Yeah, it's important to focus on victory, rehearse victory in your mind. Imagine it as if you already have it. Yeah, I get that. But when you contrast it to your current results and you start to feel that lack, limitation, and scarcity, it actually becomes counterproductive. So the counterintuitive approach is this. Ask yourself, what would someone who already has my desired results have a habit of thinking, feeling, and doing on a daily basis? What would someone who's making half a million a year or a million a year and is only working 35 hours a week, and is living a great lifestyle, and is living a life of peace, joy, contribution, and impact, what would they have the habit of thinking, feeling, and doing on a daily basis? What would be their daily routine, their habitual way of thinking, feeling, and doing? Notice what that gets you to focus on. That points to the process that produces the prize. It's not focusing on the prize. It's focusing on the process. Who do I need to be? What do I need to do so I can have the results that I want to have? You got to start with the inner world before you can produce changes in the outer world. You got to change the invisible before you can change the visible. You got to change the root before you can change the fruit. Are you with me? So most people focus on the prize, but fail when it comes to the process. And that's why success is elusive to so many. That's why we have such a high failure rate in general when it comes to entrepreneurship and, and in business. You know, 80% people fail in the first two years. And those who manage to survive are still on the struggle bus, eking out a meager existence. The mortgage business is certainly no exception, especially in the last two and a half years with hyper-competition, margin compression, inflation, rising rates, and low inventory, it's probably closer to 85 to 95% of people fail in the first two years, certainly over the last two. People have been leaving the business in droves. But this is one of the reasons why is because they, they're just focusing on the mechanics of operations, the mechanics of going out there and prospecting, but they're not changing their inner world. They're not changing their mindset. They're not changing their heart set. They're not changing what's below the ground, and therefore they can't change what's above the ground. They're not changing the root, therefore they can't change the fruit. Most people want Ferrari-level results while cultivating unwittingly firefly routines. They have 
million dollar ambitions, but trailer park habits. That's not going to jive, right? They overestimate what they can do in a day, but underestimate what they can do in a decade. They patiently and persistently, see the key is to patiently and persistently pursue progress in the process. It's the process that pushes the needle on profit and performance more than any focus on the prize. It's all about embracing the process because that consistency in the process compounds. Consistency compounds. It won't compound in a day, but it compounds daily, day after day, week after week, month after month. So stop judging yourself and your level of success by the prize and how many closings you have or how much volume you have, because that will have you feel disempowered, chances are. It's going to have you feel fear, anxiety, worry, imposter syndrome, inadequacy. It's going to drain your battery. Instead, judge your success by the progress you're making when it comes to the predetermined process, your daily routine, what you do before you go to bed, what you do in the morning, your morning routine, your hour of power for daily proactive prospecting, where, for example, we teach on Planet Prosper the 10 3 1 method. 10 outbounds, three live connections, one appointment with a top producing realtor using our realtor attraction campaign. So they're pre-sold on you before they even talk to you or at least receptive to having a conversation before they even talk to you. Notice that's all part of the process. You're either focusing on the process of success or you're neglecting it and you're making excuses and you're pushing paper around your desk. As the late and great Jim Rohn aptly said, Success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. He also said, you're going to get good at one of two things. You're going to get good at one of two things, planting in the spring or begging in the fall. You and I both know which one you want to be, planting in the spring. You don't want to be the one begging in the fall. You're going to have pain though, either way. Choose your pain. You're either going to have the pain of discipline that leads to success or the, p- the pain of regret that leads to a second best life and lack limitation and scarcity. Choose your pain. One, of course, leads to the results you want, and the other one leads to living a life in the shackles of your own making due to the fact that you're not applying these counterintuitive natures of success to your advantage. Illuminating the path of the counterintuitive nature of success is what allows us to swim upstream against the current of average. It allows us to conquer our dream because we've first conquered our comfort zone. We can't conquer our dream unless we're capable and willing to conquer our comfort zone because all growth, all growth is outside of our comfort zone. Have you noticed? There is no growth inside of our comfort zone. You know what's inside of our comfort zone? Stagnation. And stagnation breeds rot of the soul. We're either growing or we're dying. There is no in-between. So we either have the pain of stepping out of our comfort zone and creating growth, or we have the pain of stagnation that breeds rot of the soul, settling for a second best life and lack limitation and scarcity. Choose your pain. So let's move on to the third counterintuitive truth of success, the third truth, and that is think less of yourself and more of others. Less of yourself, more of, more of others. Notice how counterintuitive that is. Like Our culture is baked in the ethos of focusing on self. We're such a narcissistic society. It's all about what we look like with fashion, with cosmetics, with fitness, with apparel, with you know doing selfies. We're constantly trying to present and posture to look good in front of others. We're so self-focused, which is the opposite of humility. It's a very prideful, narcissistic society. As C.S. Lewis once said, humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking less of yourself. It's thinking less rather, thinking of yourself less. I'm totally butchering that. Let me try that again. 
C.S. Lewis, Lewis said, humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Life is not Burger King, friends. You can't have it your way, right? That, that's a complete misnomer. To have you be at the center of the universe and have it your way, as Dr. Phil would say, how's that working for you so far, right? If you're anything like me, you realize, wow, I'm very limited. I am very prone to folly. I'm prone to my own limited thinking that leads to folly, that leads to all kinds of brokenness and destruction and selfishness. I'm hopeless and helpless without God in my life renewing my mind and leading me into the light because left of my own devices, I veer into the ditch in the darkness of my own folly, my own failure, my own brokenness, my own pride, my own selfishness. So you can't have it your way. Your way leads to the ditch. Sorry, Burger King, but that doesn't work. You want to, parents in the house, you understand what I'm talking about. Want to raise a hellion child that's just constantly freaking out and throwing tantrums. I was at an event with my daughter. She's 17 and she has an amazing artistic gift to do all a matter of beautiful, exquisite art. But one of her special talents she's been honing over the years is face painting. So she goes to birthday parties and she's hired as a face painter. She does amazing work. Well, the last kid was probably around four. He was like toddler age, three or four. And he wanted a tiger. He wanted a full face tiger. And of course, tigers... When you do full face tigers, you have to sit there and be patient for more than like 30 seconds. Well, this kid was not patient. He was fidgeting around. So my daughter intelligently decided to do just a cheek tiger because he did not have the patience to sit still long enough to do a full face tiger. And at the end, he was just absolutely freaking out in full-blown tantrum mode because he didn't have a full face tiger and he was just in freak up mode super upset because he didn't have his full face tiger. You can't have it your way. Life is not Burger King, right? You want to raise a hellion? Give your kid what they want anytime when they want based on their whim, based on their demands. If you're always giving your kid what they want their way, like it's Burger King, you are going to ruin your kid. And all the parents know that to be true. You want to raise a kid with character? You've got to discipline them right? You want to raise a saint. You want to raise a champion. You want to raise a kid with character. Teach them things that are counterintuitive, like courtesy, caring, compassion, thinking about others, being mindful of others. Notice it's counterintuitive to our nature. We got to train our kids to swim upstream against the current of selfishness and pride. You can't have it your way. Life is not burger chain. Why do we honor people like Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, Gandhi? Even after they've passed, we still honor them for the difference they made in the world. Why did they have such a massive impact? Why are they honored through the ages? Because they thought of others more than they did themselves. They died to themselves so they can live for the benefit of others. And Jesus is the ultimate example of that, dying on the cross for us, to set us free from Satan's sin, death, the grave, to give us life and life abundant. He is the ultimate example of dying to oneself so that others can be set free, so that others can be blessed. Albert Einstein, he had a great quote. He said, don't seek to be a person of success. Seek to be a person of value. In other words, Focus less on yourself, focus more on others, helping others, serving others. Why do we have a call for this service to others, even though our nature is so selfish? I believe it's because it's baked into our identity. It's baked into our personhood. It's baked into our calling because that's why we're here. It's part of our God calling. Why are we here? Not to live for ourselves, but to live for others. 
Now, if you think about the day-to-day in terms of translating this in practical ways with your mortgage business, why do we have call reluctance? Why do we resist picking up the phone? Is it because we like pushing paper around our desk and that's just what we like to do more, even though we're broke as a joke because we're not prospecting? No, it's because we fear something that might happen when we make that call, true or not true. What do we fear? Rejection. We fear having our butt handed to us by a realtor who won't give us the time of day. We fear that sense of inadequacy, right? We feel inadequate. We feel like an imposter. We get nervous. We're afraid of rejection. Now, who is the focal point when it comes to this fear of rejection? Ourselves, right? We're focusing on ourselves. We're self-focused. So we unconsciously try to protect our inner child from feeling that sense of insecurity because we already are insecure, right? Most of us are already insecure. Now, how do we overcome these insecurities, this sense of inadequacy, the imposter syndrome, and all the coping mechanisms that come with protecting that inner child, like pushing paper around the desk rather than picking up the phone and confronting the thing that has us running scared, which is picking up the phone and prospecting. How do we overcome that? We overcome it by the inner work. We need to do soul renovation. We do need to do a mindset enema and purge out the crap in our mindset that has us feeling that insecurity, that has us so self-focused. And telling them unless we purge out all that crap and take out the trash, the mind trash, we're going to continue to cope. And it's like trying to move things around and making things a little pretty inside of our house when we never bother taking out the trash. You can make things prettier and you can move things around and tidy things up. But if you don't take out the trash, it's going to be a mighty stinking room, right? It's going to smell like rot and garbage, just like rearranging the chairs on the Titanic. Yeah, you might make some nice new arrangements with those chairs, but it's sinking. The whole thinking, the whole stinking thing is sinking. So what it's really about, guys, that I want to drive home is that the pursuit for purpose, for a purpose bigger than ourselves to change the lives of others, to make an impact for others, will always be more powerful than the mere pursuit for profit for ourselves. We'll only do so much to pursue profit for ourselves. And that will only take us so far. But pouring ourselves into a magnificent mission to make a difference in other people's lives, that's what will get you getting up early, staying late, and pursuing mastery, even in the face of inconvenience, even in the face of crises and challenges and turbulence, even in the face of all kinds of pain and setbacks and disappointments and so-called failure. And we'll continue to press on and press upwards because we have an upward call that's greater than just accumulation, self-aggrandizement, and trying to look good in front of others and try to prove that we're enough. Can I get an amen on this, friends? Come on now. When your why is big enough, the how will be revealed. That why can't just be about I, I, I. The truth is your I must die so your true purpose can multiply and fly. I just made that up on the spot, by the way, but apparently I'm no, I'm no rapper, so don't expect it to last, all right? It's just a momentary, a little inspiration there because you know I'm a poet and I'll be knowing it and I'll definitely be showing it. So why are you here? You're here for a reason. What is that reason? What's the reason why you're here on this earth? What's the reason why you were knit in your mother's womb? Is there a special plan and a special purpose for why you're here? Our job, I believe, is to uncover that purpose, to discover that purpose, and then to live that purpose. The difference you're called to make in the world, that's going to bring you the white, hot, fire, burning desire in your heart to overcome all the obstacles, all the challenges, and to continue to go against the current of average, to swim upstream against the current of average 
and to live the life, the counterintuitive life that leads to the abundant life, living your best life, your blessed life. So to recap, we covered three counterintuitive truths today, the counterintuitive nature of success. The first truth is income growth is preceded by inner growth. The second truth is the secret to success is in the process, not the prize. And the third truth is think less of yourself and more of others. So I hope those are good reminders for you. I'm not naive enough to think that you've never heard of these things before. I'm sure you have, but we often need reminding more than we need educating, as Tony Robbins once said. And so my question to you is, which of these three truths did you need to hear today? Which one did you need reminding of today? Which one do you need to be purposeful, intentional about applying to your life so that you can get the life-giving purpose unleashing benefits to be able to conquer your dream in a way where you're aligned with how life works. So you're no longer driving blind. You can see clearly. You can see the path before you. You understand the game and how to win the game. That's why I'm doing this. So you understand what is the game and how can you win the game. Now, when it comes to you getting to outcomes in your business, like increasing closings, increasing volume, working smarter, not harder, and earning more while working the same or less. The truth is the shortest path to the cash is and always will be attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive without the hell of cold calling, begging, bribing, or kissing butts. And if you'd like to learn more about how to do that in a way that aligns you more powerfully with the counterintuitive nature of success, I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply where you can have a conversation, an honest conversation, a real deal from the heart. Let's get real with where you're at, where you want to be and where you want to go kind of conversation with either myself or one of my consultants. And then if we're 100% certain we can help you based on the clarity we gain from that conversation, then we'll definitely show you what that looks like. And if not, frankly, we'll be the first to advise you to pass. But either way, you will leave that call based on the commitment we have to serve you to clarity and our heart to be in your corner on your team to serve you to your dream, our goal is to have you get massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we're going to have some fun. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, and you'd like to have an expert in your corner, illuminate your path and help you get more clarity on where you are and where you want to be and how to take the shortest path to the cash to get there, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. That's all we've got for today, friends. I trust you got some value from this. Remember, don't just go to the next level, grow to the next level. Don't just go to your goals, grow to your goals. My name is Doran Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all. Thanks for hanging with me.